Hi there, my name is Sam, and in this tutorial, I dive into the fundamentals of navigation so you can build custom and mobile responsive navigations for your Shopify store. In the layout panel, you can find a new layout type called navigations. And here you can either create a header or a footer. For the sake of this video, we'll focus on creating a header. But good to know is that the creation and publishing of headers and footers works in the same way. In the insert panel, you can also find a new group of elements called navigation. And here you can find all the elements you need to build a navigation from scratch with a drop down element, the cart button, country select and language select. Besides starting from scratch, you can also start with a template. And working with templates will be the easiest and fastest way. So let's head over to the template library. And here you can find a new group of templates under navigations. And within navigations, you can find a wide variety of different templates from headers to footers. So let's quickly select one to show you the possibilities. Let's select this one right here, the mega menu for nutrition and food. We edit. Here it is, and if we take a look at the layout panel right now, you can see we've created a new layout type, in this case, a header. And when it comes to the customization of this template, anything is possible. We can delete text, we can change the order of elements, we can upload our own logos, our own CTAs, anything is possible. And when it comes to customizing the dropdown, again, the possibilities are limitless. We can change the order, we can add our own products, we can delete content, we can add videos, you name it. But now let's create a minimal navigation from scratch so I can explain the ins and outs of building a navigation. A little bit of prep work has been done. We have a base row with three different rows within. On the left, the one that holds the logo, the middle that can hold the different dropdown and text elements, and on the right, we can add the commerce related elements such as the card counter or language select. Now let's drag in our drop down element under elements and navigation. We can find the drop down and let's drag it into the right place. And there we go. Now, when we preview, we can already see it's nice and functional with some default styling such as these hover effects. The dropdown element is selected and within the layer panel, we can see that the dropdown container contains the trigger and the dropdown. The trigger holds the text, which in this case is product and the icon. And if we select the trigger and head over to interactions, we can determine whether we want to trigger the dropdown on hover or on click and also determine which dropdown we want to toggle for now let's trigger this drop down on hover and this brings us to the second part of the drop down container which is the actual drop down which holds all the different columns and text elements and all these columns link to the corresponding pages of my shopify store and within the drop down you have complete freedom to customize and add any type of content you want but i will show this a little bit later in the video for now, to summarize the dropdown element, it contains of the trigger and the dropdown that holds all the content. And when the dropdown layer is selected, we can see three different styling options right here under dropdown. First of all, we have anchor. And with anchor, we can determine where the dropdown should open below the trigger, to the left, to the right, or on top of the trigger. And with align, we can determine whether the dropdown should align to the left of the trigger, to the center, or to the right. And with offset, we can determine the amount of offset or space that exists between the trigger and the dropdown. Currently, it's set to 6. If we change it to 60, you can see that we have now created more space between the trigger and the dropdown. For now, let's set it to 0. The width of the dropdown is always connected to the trigger. So if we change the width of this trigger, currently it's set to fit. Now let's change it to relative 100%. And now when we preview, you can also see 
that the drop down is just as wide as the trigger. And this is important to know if we want to create a mega menu. So in order for the drop down to fill up the entire page, we need to drag it outside its current column and into the base row that encompasses the entire width of the canvas. So the drop down is selected and now let's drag it into the base row. And as you can see, it fills up the entire space. So we have created a mega menu. And whether the dropdown is configured as a mega menu or not, it functions as a normal row. So anything can be dragged into this from tickers to images to videos, it doesn't matter. So to illustrate this, let's drag in a, another row within this dropdown. And then within this row, we drag in all the different columns. We change the gap to zero and delete the minimum height of 200 pixels. And now we can, for example, duplicate this row. Then we change the direction of the dropdown from vertical to horizontal. So they're next to each other. And as you can see, we can really start to work with it. We can duplicate it another time. Then we delete some of these text elements. And then for example, we can drag in a image within this row on the right. So we grab an image, we drag it in, we change the height settings to, for example, 300. And this is just to illustrate that you have complete freedom to create the navigation you want. Back to the first iteration of this navigation and let's duplicate this dropdown container. So we have two different dropdown elements. Whenever you drag in another dropdown, it's important to start naming the layers correctly. So this first dropdown in this example can be for all the men products and this dropdown can be for all the women products. And now we also have to change the layer names of both dropdown elements. So this dropdown element we call dropdown man and this dropdown element we will call dropdown women. And now when we select the trigger of each dropdown, go to interactions, we can easily determine whether we trigger the right dropdown because the name of the dropdown is based on the name of the layer as you can see right here. To make the navigation functional, you select a text element or a column in this case that contains the text element, head over to interactions and add a go to link action. And within the go to link action, you copy and paste the path of this specific Shopify page. So for example, if we want to link all products to our collection page, we go to our Shopify store and copy the path of this page, which in this case is collections slash all we paste it in then we can choose whether to open a new tab or not and in this case let's click on no and also important not to forget when you have a logo within your navigation and you want to link this logo to your home page also make sure to add a go to link action to your home page and that's it for the drop down element now let's get into the other navigation elements Within the insert panel under elements, you can find the navigation elements. The drop down element we have just discussed. Now let's dive into the cart button, country select, and language select. We start with the cart button, so let's drag it onto the canvas right here. And now let's zoom in a little bit more. The cart element contains the icon and the cart count. And the icon of this card can, of course, be changed and modified as well as the card count. We can change the color, the shape, the size, you name it. Everything is possible right here within the style panel. And of course, the card count will dynamically display the amount of products that are in the card. Then we need to add an action to the card element. So let's select the card element. Go to interactions and here the open cart action is added by default. And with open cart, you have two different options. Redirect will open the cart page and with custom, you can trigger a custom cart drawer. If you select custom, you'll need to add custom code to your team. 
and the exact implementation may vary depending on your team. But you can check out our documentation where we will include the code snippets for some of the most popular Shopify teams. Next up, let's add the country select element and place it next to the cart. The country select element contains of the country name. We can change the country name right here from the country name to the country code. Then it has this separator, the currency code and the currency symbol, which we can all modify, change or delete if needed. And the country and currency you can select is all based upon the markets you have set up within Shopify markets. So let's go to Shopify and right here within my markets settings, you can see I have a Dutch market and a United States market. So when we go back to our navigation and preview, you can see that I can select the Netherlands or the United States. Now let's go to the last element, which is the language select. Within the insert panel, we drag it in next to the country select. And this element contains the language code and the icon. And again, the language you can select is based upon the language you have set up within Shopify. Until now, we've seen this placeholder page. And this is the default page when building your navigation. But you can also build or preview your navigation while you have one of your other layouts in view. And this way you can create the navigation in context of your other pages. So on the right side, you can see that we currently preview the placeholder, but we can change this to any of the layouts we have created. For example, our homepage. And there we have it. We now see the navigation in context of our homepage. And talking about context, there are two important position properties we need to cover for the navigation. So the navigation is selected and the current position of the navigation is position relative. And when we preview, you can see that the navigation stays at the top of the page and doesn't scroll down when we scroll down. But then if we change the position of the navigation to fixed and then when we preview, you can see that the navigation stays in place while we scroll down the page. And these are the two important properties to keep in mind when building your navigation. Now let's focus on making the navigation responsive. And when it comes to making the navigation responsive, it works the same as with any other element. However, depending on your design, you will need to create a separate navigation for mobile. And in some cases for the tablet viewport as well. And you do this in the form of an overlay and the overlay will then be visible only on the relevant viewports and vice versa. And to accommodate this logic, the first thing we need to do is create the hamburger menu. So to do this, we head over to the insert panel and then under images, you can find the icon element and we drag this next to the card element right here. Then we change some of the properties width to 30 height to 30 we change the color to black and then we look for the right icon which is the hamburger icon in this case and there we go what we do next is hide this icon on the desktop viewport since we don't need it we do that right here then we head over to the mobile viewport and now we need to make sure to unhide it so the icon is selected and then we open the eye or unhide it. And what we have to do next is hide these two drop downs because the content in the drop down will be within the overlay. So let's hide these elements, quickly change the position of the hamburger menu to the right. And now the logic has been set up to create a mobile responsive navigation. Next up, we drag in a overlay. So again, the insert panel under interactive, we can drag in a overlay and there we go. And now we can start to customize this overlay. So it turns into a mobile navigation. The first thing we do is change the position of the content. We change the position from relative to absolute and then place it in the top right corner. So on the mobile viewport, it will nicely overlap with the 
hamburger icon and now we change some of the properties so let's delete the radius and the border and then this close button we place to the top right corner there we go we add more inside spacing i would say 80 to the top and bottom and 20 to the left and right and then we delete some of these content elements and now we drag in the accordion element also under interactive and the accordion element is essentially the way to create the drop down like effect but then within an overlay so now let's change some of the styling properties of this accordion so what I've done is adjusted a bit of the styling and the main thing I've done is add a row within the content tab and then each row holds a text element and then just as with the drop down each row will direct to that specific page so let's say this is for shoes we can duplicate it another time then we say that this is for t-shirts and the list goes on and then we link each row to that specific page just as we've done with the drop down element and now we can duplicate this item another time and then we can fill in all the other content so this is for the women products and we do the same thing one more thing i like to change that is the height of this overlay currently the height is set to fit but let's change that to relative 100 so it will fill up all the space that is available and when we go to the mobile viewport this is starting to look really really good and now what we have to do is actually make sure that we can open this overlay and to do that we have to add a trigger to the hamburger icon which is only visible on the relevant viewport so we select the icon we head over to interactions and then we add a action and in this case to trigger the overlay we select the right overlay and now when we preview we can trigger the overlay by clicking on the hamburger icon there we go and as you can see the accordion is also nice and functional and we can also close the overlay as you can see there's one more thing we need to do and of course we can do many many things we can drag anything we want in this overlay just as you can do within the drop down but we need to adjust the animation so it appears from the side which is nicer so we head back to the desktop viewport we select the overlay then we select the content layer and under interactions we can change the effect and we want to open the overlay not with expand but with a slight animation and then it should slide from the left there we go let's preview go to mobile and now when we open the overlay it looks very very nice and that's how you can make a responsive navigation now it's finally time to publish our navigation to shopify and we can do this by simply clicking on publish the header is published so let's go to our shopify store and within the shopify team editor we can add a header and there we have it our navigation is now within our shopify store and of course it's also nice and responsive just as we have built it within instant besides publishing our header like this there's something else we can do so let's head back to instant and what we can do is publish this header as our default header which will replace your current header with this header across your entire shopify store to do this we open the layout panel we head into the sections of this header and here we can set the header as the main header so let's do it and then we get this notification set this layout as your team's main header a backup of the current main header will be created and can be restored after publishing all right now let's publish it's published as our main header so let's head back to the shopify team editor and there we have it the header we have created within instant is now set up as the default header for our entire shopify store and that's it for this tutorial so I hope you have a good understanding of the fundamentals of this new and exciting layout type and stay tuned for more product updates and tutorials.